Hello Rage Quitters, this is Gregs and welcome, welcome back to the true world of survival horror. Yep, this is as hardcore as it gets for Resident Evil. I can't believe it's been 21 years since the original launched on the PSX or the PlayStation 1. It's also been over three years since Capcom said, we do it, and boy have they done it. What can I say about this game? It's basically a reimagining of the amazing 1998 classic. As you can tell, I'm a big fan of I think Resident Evil 2 is one of my favourite survival horror games. So it's been built from the ground up using their in-house RE engine. It's the same engine that powered Resident Evil 7. Again, a fantastic game. And it's also powering the upcoming Devil May Cry 5. Except this time, there's a few added bells and whistles to the engine. So, the version we'll be reviewing is based on the PC build. And I'm pleased to report that Capcom are finally getting their chops around creating a decent PC version of the games. Since the MT framework days, we've received quite a few stellar PC parts. Resident Evil 2 is adding to that list, it's continuing the trend. So if we delve into the game's options, you'll find a slew of items to tinker with. You've got audio, video, controller setup, mouse setup, sensitivity, you name it, there's everything they could ever wish to tweak. It always warms my heart when you see such an extensive and well put together options menu, especially for graphics. As you can see here, there's all sorts of stuff you can tweak and it shows the, a nice little picture of what happens when you tweak the settings. That's pretty good, that's a sign that love has been put into the part. There's also the inclusion of DirectX 12, which is interesting. Not many games support DirectX 12, uh, but it, the list is growing. I would say keep it off for now, unless you are an AMD person, because I think people who are on AMD hardware tend to get more mileage. It's not great performance, unfortunately, so keep it at 11 if you're having problems with DirectX 12. Hopefully that will be improved over time, we shall see. We also have native support for widescreen displays, which is great for the 21 x 9 crowd. If you're in the lucky club, then you're well catered for. Here we've got a nice little picture of uh, Resident Race Quitter, Blackbeard, showing off his lovely big screen. Shame he won't go past the start menu in Resident Evil 2, he's a bit of a pussy. So, when you start the game for the first time, here is what you're going to see. You've got three choices to make, assisted, standard or hardcore. I've not tried assisted yet because it seems probably a little bit too easy. Uh, standard is probably the sweet spot, hardcore is just crazy man. That is definitely another mode for another time. So I'd probably suggest sticking with standard if it's your first run. Unless you just love pain and suffering. So how does this game play? Right, let's delve into it. Let's start off with the gameplay mechanics. Resident Evil 2 is predominantly a survival horror action game. Less emphasis on the action this time. This is a lot steadier, slower paced game with an over the shoulder perspective. Heavy emphasis is placed on exploration, item management, and a little bit of gunplay thrown in for good measure. You'll traverse three main locales in the game in search of a way to escape Raccoon City's living dead infestation. First off, the Raccoon Police Department. You would think it would be a nice safe place to hold out, but how wrong you would be. You've got the sewers, which are absolutely horrible in a good way, and also the lab areas. I'll stick to showing RPD footage for now, I don't want to spoil the game for you. The main threat in the game has shifted from previous titles in the series. This time, the zombies are a major threat. They don't swarm to overwhelm you, they're classic shifting stumbling beasts. But don't be fooled, they do have quite a reach they can grab you at any given moment and making your life a misery. Their resistance to lower calibre firearms has been significantly upped. They are bullet sponges. A regular Joe zombie can take up to 7-10 to 10 pistol shots before going down. That's 7-10 to 10 pistol shots in the head. In the fucking head. Seriously. Even after it goes down, there's a high chance of it getting back up again. There are ways to dispatch him for good, however. You can either use precious higher calibre rounds and give them a centre parting they'll never forget, or you could just use some good old strategic dismemberment by relieving them of their arms or legs, or even both. However, they still pose a threat, especially when Mr X makes an appearance. Probably the most efficient way is to run past the zombies, saving precious ammo. There are a few instances when combat is the only solution. It's an interesting take on the classic zombie enemy. It offers a choice of how to deal with the threat. Personally, I love shooting off limbs and watching them squirm on the floor. Yeah, I'm a little perverse and maybe even a little sick in the head, but it's damn good fun. The first of the series is the new dynamic crosshair. This is akin to the one used in Counter-Strike. I know, old school game. Hold your nerve and focus your aim, and your reticule will shrink. This increases your chance of scoring that all-important critical hit. You know, 
the one that could give the zombies so much needed air conditioning for the brains. It also affects your aiming dramatically. The smaller the crosshair, the more accurate you're going to be. Leave the crosshair wide, you're going to miss a lot of shots, and that's important. I suppose it does make sense that it fits in as it ups the tension tenfold when you're going for that all important headshot. I really think we owe it to ourselves just to take a moment just to truly appreciate how advanced the gore system is in this game, how disgusting and gross things really can get. Speaking of sick visuals, let's move on to the game's graphics. The RE engine uses photogrammetry technology to deliver some striking visuals. The world is rendered by using photorealistic assets, as well as some fantastic use of shadowing and lighting, with some facial animations bringing cinematics to life with eerie realism. Never have I seen such a juicy looking burger before, rendered with perfection, it looks good enough to eat. Hmm, maybe not. Looks way too greasy for my taste. The game also exhibits some really impressive weather effects. With the addition of volumetric fog, smoke and fire, it all moulds together to bring the striking beauty to the game. A slow walk down a dimly lit corridor is absolutely amazing. It adds so much to the game. As mentioned before, the blood and gore is probably the most sickening display of sticky looking macabre in the series. Try saying that after 10 points. Entrails glisten, blood and corpses are persistent throughout the whole game. Backtracking through would allow you to marvel at the carnage you've created. It's rather impressive and certainly not for the squeamish. Character animations are top notch with some very impressive zombie motion capture. Reloading your weapons, sprinting, player injured states are all meticulously animated, showing off some seamless blending between transitions. Special mention has to go to the G-Boss's final form. It looks so delicious and fluid. I wonder how they actually pulled that off to have it animate so smoothly. You'll see what I'm getting at when you get to fight the bastard. Speaking of player injured states, all the wear and tear or injuries you sustain through the game are visible on your character. Dirt, blood, grunge, water and torn fabric are all displayed on the model. This is really impressive and was actually originally planned for the cancelled Resident Evil 2 from 1997, also known as Resident Evil 1.5. This interests me as there are also a few other items raised from the dead that made it into the game, such as Ada's trench coat and glasses outfit, the fat cops and Claire's Elsa Walker outfit, which comes as part of the deluxe edition of the game. Elsa was the original female protagonist from Resident Evil 1.5, she was later scrapped and replaced with Claire, that's some great fan service there. The enemy roster is a little leaner this time around, with birds and spiders being cut. The arachnophobes among you can breathe a sigh of relief. There is one new enemy type though, which I won't detail here. Needless to say, it can be a pain in the ass. You don't want to tangle with it. Mr X makes a return and his mission is still to pester the hell out of you. He's as big and dumb as he looks and can be easily avoided on the first run. Not so much after that. You can discover that for yourselves. In the meantime, here's some footage of me peeing my pants, waiting for the bastard to go away.
Mr. X is a double-edged blade for me. So Maze now is on a mission to track you down. He enters rooms by either slowly ducking below the door frame or just by barging in. It's highly atmospheric, but sometimes it can bog you down a little bit, especially when you're on low ammo or just low health or you just want to progress through the game unmolested. He's a good enemy though, and I wouldn't be without him, for the most part anyway. The game's audio save the music. It is rather atmospheric, it's rather sparse, a bit like the original Resident Evil actually that had sparse music, but it's just not that memorable. There are only three themes that stand out for me. The reworked save room, Hunk's theme, damn awesome, and the RPD main hall. While Hunk's theme is totally reworked, the RPD theme and the save theme are very familiar. Personally, if I found the best experience, I'd highly recommend the Deluxe Edition soundtrack swap feature. Not only is the soundtrack better, but it's been remastered so it does sound a lot crisper. Even the user interface audio has been bought across. Not sure about the announcer's voice though, that's been totally redone and it sounds a bit off to me. Why not use the original? Thoughts, anybody? Does it sound better? Do you prefer the original? Weapon audio is also a mixed bag. Regular pistols sound a little flat, as does the upgraded shotgun, which is a damn shame. If you compare it to the originals, it pales in comparison. The other weapons sound good though, particularly the Magnum, but again, I prefer the original game's weapon audio. They sound much more aggressive, if that makes any sense. Enemy audio, however, oh boy, talk about terrifying. It makes me wish I had a Dolby Atmos receiver so I could really scare myself shitless. I'm not sure who they used to record the female zombies' voices, but it is absolutely blood curdling, completely awesome and terrifying. The game exhibits a variety of ambient sounds such as creaking floorboards, rattling bars, metal being scraped, as well as the ever present rain. Everything just gels together, a symphony of terror and carnage. It's a treat to the ears. Resident Evil 2 is a good game. It's an exceptional game. It's an awesome game. However, it's not a rosy and peachy with the PC part. There are a few non-game breaking issues we run into, but they are issues nonetheless. Let's start with the horrid anti-aliasing solutions that's been implemented. SMAA, TAA and FXAA. Any combination used gives the game a blurred appearance. Having AA disabled seems to mess up some effects such as hair. It's a weird one, really hope it gets fixed. This may be nitpicky now, but it seems a shame that the developers didn't flesh out the keyboard controls a little more. I mean, having to press two keys to perform a single action? Mm, that shouldn't really be a thing. You know, I can appreciate it is needed on the controller due to the limited buttons, but on a keyboard you have over 50 of them, so you know it shouldn't be a thing really. Again, it's not a massive deal, but I had to mention it. Another technical issue comes from the game's screen space reflections. It's an anomaly that affects most of the reflections in the game, if not all, on all platforms as well. As stated earlier, it's not a game breaker, but shouldn't be in such a high profile, big budget game, especially in 2019. At the time of this review going live, the more pressing issue is performance. As the player explores larger areas on the map, there's a couple of seconds worth of stuttering. This is a widespread issue that only seems to affect the PC version, in particular Nvidia GPU owners. It is recoverable, but slightly spoils experience. We hope either a game ready driver or an update to the game fixes this. Technical issues aside, we had fun with this game, and Capcom are renowned for their extra game modes, secrets and bonus unlocks on completion, and Resident Evil 2 is no different. The game rewards exploration and a completion, and that's one of the main selling points. There are costumes, weapons and extra game modes to unlock. It's nice to see that Hunk and Tofu have made it across as well. Tofu. That brings back so many memories. So hard, but yet yeah, so rewarding once you complete it. Both Leon and Claire have two playthrough modes, which are akin to the classic A B scenarios. Once you complete the game, you can choose the second run option, which gives you the option to play as the other character. This is a neat little addition and allows you to carry on the story from the other person's perspective. It mixes things up. It also grants you the true ending of the game once completed. That's a total of four playthroughs for those who have that completionist itch to scratch. Good luck. We love Resident Evil 2 and cannot wait to play more. The game looks great, it has silky smooth controls on both the keyboard, mouse and controller and the sound is also generally awesome. And I'm delighted to award Resident Evil 2 the Rage Quitter's prestigious Legendary Award. Capcom recently announced the upcoming free DLC entitled Ghost Survivors. Mmm, this sounds very reminiscent of the mercenaries mode from previous games. We'll be sure to check it out upon release. 
Well, we hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, please hit all those buttons below. It helps us grow. I'd also like to hear from you. What did you think of the game? Is the game worthy of our prestigious Red Quiz Award? Let us know in the comments. We're always up for a good discussion. I'll also be streaming the game on Twitch. For now, I'll leave you with these parting words. Hey, it's up to us to take out Umbrella. Hey.